Who's that? That's tomorrow, Drew. No, it isn't. I met her with Andy. Good God, what's happened to her? She had a nose job, Dad. She's completely different. That's what Andy said. Poor Tamara. She's such a sad girl. She used to come and help you wash the car, didn't she, Nicholas? Yeah, we were a little teenager. She liked a bit of family after her dad left. Is that Tamara Drew that writes a column in one of the Sundays? Mm. Used to. Writes for The Independent now. Oh, yeah. She spent weeks going on about her nose job. Mm. Was her old one an awful conk? Yes. Mm. She's poured herself into those shorts. They don't give us thrush. Gemma, your character Tamara understandably um, gets plastic surgery, which definitely enhances her appearance and boosts her confidence. But that also gets her into a lot of trouble. Mm. Do you ever think it's a bad idea to get plastic surgery? Yeah, I think so. I, don't, I think, it, yeah, it's aesthetically she becomes more pleasing. But I don't think she becomes more beautiful. And um, she... She feels, yeah, I, I was interested in the idea of like, when you change yourself, it's such a drastic thing to do, but how does it really make you feel afterwards? Do you still, do you feel more beautiful inside? And so the way that people relate to you um, once you've had it done, you know, um, she, she, she just feels like, uh, she uses, <laughs> she uses this kind of newfound sex appeal in, in you know, somewhat to her advantage, but actually, she really, what she wants is respect, and she doesn't get it, you know, and um, I think that's interesting. I, I think, yeah, of course, it makes you feel better if you feel more beautiful or whatever, but actually, it doesn't really, unless you work out why you don't feel great on the inside, then there's no real point of having it done. So on that note, if any of your friends came to you and said, you know, they were considering plastic surgery and they really wanted it, yeah, how would, do you think you would react? Um, I wouldn't stop them. I wouldn't stop them. Um, I just think, I think I would just talk to them a lot about um, and try and reassure them that they are, they don't, you know, they don't need it. But ultimately, it's the individual's, you know, decision. Now, what was it like wearing the prosthetic nose? Did it make you feel different? Or I feel actually, I really loved it because <laughs> I feel like a character actress, and I never really get to play those character roles. And so for a few days I got to play a character role, and um, it's liberating actually, because sometimes it can be a bit restrictive playing polished, beautiful, whatever, you know. Um, so I loved it, and I also I, I was in disguise. I I, uh, I went on set, and nobody knew it was me, and that was fun. <laughs> so I really liked those days. Now a lot of people keep props from the set. Did you keep that? I did actually. The makeup artist gave me the, the amazing nose and framed it, and I have it actually in my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Since tomorrow Drew is about outer beauty and ideal beauty, in regards to your own appearance, I love the fact that you know you're curvaceous. You have that Marilyn Monroe kind of bombshell body. Oh. But this is Hollywood. Did you ever feel pressure to lose some weight? Oh yeah, yeah. And I said, F you. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, no, I, I just think it's, um, well, you know, you do it for yourself. Don't do it for anybody else. If you want to lose weight, then fine. If you want to be fit, then fine. But just do it for yourself. Because as soon as you have pressure from anybody else, it actually doesn't happen. You've been in a lot of great movies this year, Clash of the Titans, Prince of Persia. What can we expect to see you in next? I'm actually doing a play, so if anyone's in London, uh, come and see me in that. It's um, Ibsen. It's um, called The Master Builder. And then next year is my filmmaking year. Um, and I, there's so many things that I'm attached to, but I, I shouldn't really talk about them until I'm in the lunch queue. So, Why did you decide to do the play? Because I love, love theatre. It's my life. And actually, I, doing films is kind of, I, fi I feel like it's taking a break from my proper career, which is in theatre. Um, I just love it. So will you want to do Broadway here? Yeah, I'd love to. Although apparently you have to have a green card, which I don't have. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe I'll, I'll get one of those if I can. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll get invited over. But I'd love to. It's a, it's a dream of mine, actually. Well, we'd love to have you. Oh, thank you. Luke, you have a musical background. Did you have any desire to play Dominic's role, the rock star? No, I didn't, but I was very jealous when I heard the music because I thought you did such a good job. It was brilliant, and uh, it, was, it, it was nice. I mean, I, 
I no, but I would like to do a, a, a film where I sang, may, maybe a musical film. Um, I thought about that quite a bit in the last couple of years, but um, no, I couldn't have done. Anywhere near as good a job as Dominic did with oh, his don't role. Stop being nice. You did though. <laughs> horrible all morning, and now to suddenly start being nice. It'll well, you know, we've got to mix the good with the bad. You're no, right, yeah. So I'll try, try nice and be you, nice about me now. Yeah. Okay, anyway. so you played Apollo in Clash of the Titans. You're I, going to play Zeus in Immortals. I've done Zeus, oh, and done I'm now Zeus? playing Aramis in Three Musketeers. Okay, so do you. Up which to one date. Do you, so up the, I'm sorry. It's so okay. with, with both Greek gods, which one do you prefer, Apollo's the son of Zeus? Um. Oh, Zeus, because I just did plenty more in the film, and I got to fight a lot and get bloody, which was great. And I lost a lot of weight and got really fit, which I didn't have to do in Clash of the Titans because I was in armor all the time. But in this one, I'm, I'm basically in the, not very much <laughs> for the majority of the film. So I really enjoyed that, yeah, a lot. Dominic, lately you seem to play the bad boy. You played um, a high-class thief in an education. You're the flamboyant rock star in this film. Is that the type of role you gravitate towards? Well, I find them more um, entertaining to, and challenging to play because I think you, uh, I don't like, I wouldn't like the audience to, to despise or hate them. And on paper, they often, I read this particular role and I saw a, a, a musician who was extremely arrogant and egotistical and full of himself and not prepared to consider anything but his own world. So I think the challenge was to m make them very colourful and at the same time, I hope, you don't really dislike him, but you feel a bit sorry for him, and you're kind of charmed by the fact that he's just a bit stupid. He's a bit dense. Um, but they're always, yeah, anything that's multi-layered, and you can try and find, or f find a function or a reason in, in f for their behavior and why, why they operate in that way, it's great, because it gives you, gives you something to put your teeth into. Now, I don't know if this has already happened to either of you, but if a girl you're dating, whom you obviously like just the way she is, if she came up to you and said, I was considering plastic surgery, how do you think you would react? Would you encourage her or discourage her? Depends what it is. I'd like to say that I probably wouldn't ever be going out with someone that came up to me and said they're going to get plastic surgery, unless they had an accident. What about if they'd had it before oh, you met them and you didn't know that they'd had it? You can always tell if they've had it. No, you can't. Yeah, you can. You can't. Yeah, you can. Not with nose jobs, you can't. Sometimes you can't. Most of, well, you I can. know a girl who has had a nose job and you'd never know. I know her. I knew she had a nose job. Well, you don't know her. Doreen. Doreen from Wales. Doreen. <laughs> it wasn't Doreen. It was Ethel. Ethel. <laughs> Ethel Bagless. <laughs> Ethel left nose. <laughs> but yeah, but she got beaten in I Ipswich. Well, yeah, by, she, by she was a professional <laughs> boxer, you see. <laughs> no, let's answer this seriously. If, she, if, if someone wants... I think people can do whatever they like with themselves. But... Imagine if I didn't say anything after that. <laughs> but, but I think it doesn't, people shouldn't care so much about their, their, their appearance. You've got to worry world. about what's inside, you know, worry about how your personality is, yeah. is being uh, perceived by, by every other person, you know. It's, um, but if it makes you happy... What did we you say? Know? You can change the wrapper, but you can't change the, the biscuit. same biscuit <laughs> inside. But if you saw Tamara with the nose she had before in real life, would you say, oh, I think she should get one? Oh, no, it's not for me to say. I think but I, you, I like the nose before. I, I think it's quite hot. Yeah. I think it's strong I like a squidgy nose. nose. I, I, I think strong noses are very sexy. Stephen, until I read the credits, I honestly thought this film was directed by a woman. Uh, you <laughs> captured... Yeah, you paid me a compliment or insulted me. Well, no, no. I mean, actually, I probably shouldn't be surprised because you did direct Sherry and the Queen, so... But you did capture Tamara and her life very beautifully. Mm. What drew you to this script? Well, I just sort of liked it. I mean, I, can't, I don't really analyze my feelings. I just liked it. I mean, I was surrounded by women making it, so I'm not... So really, you're paying them a compliment. I just did what I was told. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's to say, had I didn't done it in another way, I'd have been chopped up. <laughs> now, did you read the graphic novel before taking on this project? Well, I read it after I, I, I first read a script. Okay. And then I read the graphic novel. So did you change anything at all, or what were your feelings? The, uh, well, the, the, I read a script, so the, the changes had already been done, but I thought they were the right ones. I mean, I went, sometimes I would go back to the book, and sometimes, you know, would, would um, sometimes you change it, and sometimes you don't. The two girls, the yeah. teenage girls, Fantastic. they were heavily, they were, they were fantastic. They're more in the film than in the book. Now, was, was that your addition, or...? Everybody just loved them, so we just, you know, said, can't we have more of them? 
I can imagine a film without them. No, not can I. <laughs> and then what projects are you working on next? I may make a film in Las Vegas. About? Sportsbook Gamblers. Oh, that's completely different. Yes. Why do you want me to make the same film every time? I don't. I just think it's interesting that you're able to go from one genre to another. Well, I never think of it like that. It's just that you read something and it's very fresh. But I could easily, you know, it's easy to make a boring film.